you, but that's not the situation for most people with scoliosis, okay? So the live is coming onto the Facebook group right now. Welcome, welcome, happy Monday to you all. And uh, here we go. All right, here we go. So I'm live in the Facebook group. All right, welcome everybody. Flexibility and myofascial release for scoliosis. Why? Those of you who are already on the line, online with me, you already just heard me say that this is relevant for most people, unless you're hypermobile. People who have hypermobility or hyperflexibility, obviously you don't need to work on flexibility. In fact, you need to work much more on stabilization and you have to be careful because you're going to, um, you're going to be too, you, you have to watch out uh, not to, Sorry, I'm dealing with tech stuff here. People are joining the room. I got people right here on Zoom with me and I'm streaming live in the group. Welcome, welcome everybody. Hi. How much fun to be able to share with you guys a little bit. Okay, so these are the scoliosis series, quick sessions. Morning, morning, Denise, morning, Dante. That's right, so these are quick and dirty as they say, you know, real, a little slice of something important in the scoliosis relief program and something important for working with scoliosis anyway. So our big hope, for those of you who don't know me or haven't seen me right now, our big hope is that through a concentrated program, we can certainly improve the health of the back, certainly stabilize the spine, certainly improve our safe range of motion, which is what we're going to talk a lot about today, and hopefully improve Cobb angle. So it happens. Um, you can check out some of my testimonials. It doesn't happen with everybody, but when you're putting together a program that is supporting the spine and elongating the spine, which means making it longer and strengthening the weakened areas and improving your perception of your scoliosis curves, you can't help but begin to improve your posture. So it's called the Gradual Postural Improvement Program because you do improve your posture and those forces cause a reduction in the Cobb angle. Whether you're gonna get that reduction or whether I can guarantee you're gonna get that reduction is one thing. It's very complex working with scoliosis, but at least you know that you're putting together the forces that work on the Cobb angle and reverse the scoliosis curves, okay? So it's a lot about forces, physics, okay? So, um, oh, it's Patty. Oh, hey, cool. Right on, yeah, I noticed that. Okay, good morning, Patty. So happy you joined on here. Great, okay. I just have so much fun talking to you guys. I won't even get started here if I don't if I don't if I don't focus in here on what I want to do because people are fun. All right. So streaming live. Here we go. So I asked you guys to bring a mat for today, and because I'm going to show you some very very basic stretches, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about why it is important to be flexible. So a lot of it has to do with what's called your safe range of motion. Okay. And what that means is if you, if you go and stand up and your spine is very stiff and in particular, your hips, okay, your hip area and your legs, if they're very stiff, which they typically are in our society because we spend most of our time sitting on chairs, okay, then you're going to have problems around the hips and you're going to have a number of different issues. The tight hamstrings make give you an anterior pelvic tilt and so because they sort of pull your pelvis. So this tightens up here, your lower back tightens up here. And so you wanna release your pelvis, you wanna release your hamstrings as a direct relation between your hamstrings and your lower back. Release them a little bit. You wanna get be able to sit cross-legged with your knees a little bit down. So if you're sitting on the ground and your knees are right up here, for example, it's gonna be hard for you. You're gonna have less safe range of motion for your spine and it's gonna be harder to work on your back, okay? So when you sit down on the ground, even without a cushion, you're hoping that your knees can go a little bit lower. Some of you are even more flexible than me. Ideally, you're, for example, if you did a butterfly stretch, which we're gonna do in a minute, ideally, if you did this, your feet, your knees would go all the way down to the ground. So I, I'm not as flexible as I want to be either, but I'm a lot more flexible than I used to be and it makes a huge difference. Okay, so does that make some sense? You know, when you see people sitting on the ground and they're all hunched over, like if they're sitting on the ground and you're trying to cross your legs and you go like this, and you'll see people like this in a yoga studio, right? or they're trying to cross their legs and they're like this. You see them from behind. They're sitting there, you're, you're behind them listening to someone and they're kind of like this. That's all has to do with the tension of the hips and the legs, 
Okay, so once you release that and you begin slowly, right? Nothing happens very fast. Okay? You can't work on the body very fast. Excuse me, as I said before, you wouldn't even want to change your scoliosis curve very fast because it would be very, very painful. Okay, it's already uncomfortable to work with your scoliosis curve as those of you who are working on it know. Okay, especially on the convex side where you're rotated backwards. So I had a right convex thoracic curve only. So I know this looks like the left to you guys, but this is my right here. And so I'm rotated, I'm still rotated back on the right a little bit. And so every time I do exercise, the back on the right is actually weaker. Even if it's tighter, it's weaker and it's painful. And so you kind of get used to a little bit of discomfort as you're working on yourself. Never mind trying to do that fast, right? Never mind just sort of wrenching your spine. That's what people do in the operation, in the surgery. They have an instrument that looks like something in a mechanic's garage where they open you up and they, they winch you with like a really powerful lever. They winch the spine over. And let's just take a moment here to acknowledge how beautiful the spine is and how strong the human body is that you can do this and you're usually gonna be fine. It's extremely painful and takes like six months to recover, right? It's very, very painful recovery but you're, you don't have typically injury as a result of that. So just as an aside, let's just acknowledge how amazing the human spine is, how powerful the body is, but you winch it into place and then you brace it with all these screws and all these different things. So rods or fusions, right? So we're trying to avoid that. And if we have had an operation, we're trying to improve our posture without resorting to more operations. It's possible. It is very complex because the spine is a series of joints from top to bottom. Okay, so, and there's musculature that goes up and down your spine and in between all the vertebrae. Okay, so we work on that. We get in on that in the scoliosis relief program. So we're gonna talk about, we wanna have better flexibility to improve our posture. We wanna have reduced, reduced knee and uh, back injury. Okay, so knees and back injuries. So all of that is associated with a nice, healthy range of motion for the spine that allows you not only to move around with more safety, all right, to have less likely to be injured. It also enables you to work on your scoliosis that much better. And it enables you to recover from the soreness that I mentioned before. Okay, so any of you know what myofascial release is? Probably all of you do. Okay, so that has to do with something like a medieval torture device like this. <laughs> it's not really a medieval torture device, but it looks like it, right? It looks like a mace. Ah, <laughs> from one of the games that my kids have. Okay, so, but it's actually foam. Okay, so it's actually soft. You need one of these. Okay, guys, get yourself one of these. It doesn't have to have a divot in the middle. Okay, but I like this because then your spine settles in the middle there and you get to work both sides of your spine up and down on the side. Okay, but you don't need that. Okay, if you already have a foam roller that's relatively flat, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to look at that today. So let's get right into something real easy, which is a hamstring stretch sitting on the ground. So this is about the easiest you can do. Um, actually, the easiest you can do is on a chair. So I'm going to show you this here. So you guys can do this if you're on your couch right now. Just come on the corner of your, on the edge of your couch. You have to be on the edge. A couple reasons why. Okay, the most important one being that your thighs have to be free and clear. Okay, if your thought, if you're back on your chair, so if you're far back on your chair or you're in your couch and you're sunk in, right? Couches are like, whoop, <laughs> couches just, you know, we sink right in. But if, even if you're back on your chair, when you go to stretch your leg out, which is what we're about to do, you will see that your thigh is blocked, okay? So, right on the edge, and if you're on a couch, don't be shy, perch on the edge, even if your knees are right up high because the couch is low, it's fine, okay? Perch yourself there, and one foot forward, and heel to the ground, toe to the ceiling, sit up nice and tall, and then I want you to just tilt forward at the waist. So here, we're gonna keep the neutral spine. We're gonna keep the spine pretty straight with a small inward curve in the lower back, that's fine. We want that. Okay, and we're just gonna tilt forward until you feel that hamstring pulling. Excuse me, and you will feel it pulling pretty fast. Okay, so right down there, pulling underneath that. Maybe you'll feel it under the knee, that's okay. Maybe you'll feel it in the calf, that's also okay. It means your calves are a little tense and you could use a calf stretch too but we're not as worried about that. It's a little distal to the spine, which means it's further away from the back. Okay, and the most important thing for us is those hamstrings, and you will feel it under the knee too. So you're just hanging out here. And when you stretch, a stretch is not a workout. So that means that it's not something that you do in repetitions and you get tired. Instead, 
It's something, let's do it again. It's something that you take and you hold and you relax into. So once you've taken the position, you can take it in such a way that it's unbearable. Okay, so I had a lady in a class a couple of weeks ago say, wow, I can't do it at all. Like, not at all. And I said, okay, well, that's because you're doing it too hard. And so that was a new concept to her. I said, well, back off. So back off if you can't hold it, you're, you're pushing too hard. So come to a place where it's mildly uncomfortable, yes, okay? But it's not insupportable, like we say in French. It's not, it's not, it, you can't, um, it's not unbearable, right? So then, and then you're gonna rest here. And now let's switch legs. Okay, so we did that for a little bit. Let's switch legs, other leg out, okay? Now, same thing again. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about a breathing technique which we use in the scoliosis relief program to help you stretch better. Okay, so let's lean into it, keeping the back nice and straight. We're not rounding forward right now. There's another stretch where we'll do that, but here we're just gonna lean forward. And then I want you to breathe in through your nose in a nice deep inhalation and breathe out through your mouth. Okay, and try to slow your breathing rate. So typically you would stay here for anywhere from a minute to three minutes. Okay, sometimes people do some of these stretches even longer. And I'll tell you what, my friends, a minute never seems so long. <laughs> okay, you will, you will be like, man, this is the longest minute in, in the universe. Okay, anything that's where you're either seem a little bit bored or it's a little bit difficult, the time just seems to slow down, doesn't it? Okay, interesting fact as an aside, I always remember this in high school. I had a computer tech teacher tell me that the Romans had two words for time. One for time as perceived going quick and one for time as perceived going slowly. Completely irrelevant in a way, but kind of neat. Little fact for you guys. So now we are going to, I mean, it, it is relevant, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a digression. Forgive my digression. Now we are going to sit on the ground. And you don't have to. So if you're watching this, you can do it if you want, or you cannot do it if you want. It's okay. Okay. We're going to sit on the ground and we're going to, I just want to show it to you so you guys have a sense of it. Okay. I'm going to move my butt back here. I'm going to breathe in, nice big inhalation. And I'm going to just reach down. And again, here, I'm not going to fold my back. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you touch your toes or not. Okay. It's always cool if you can touch your toes, but I don't want you to be too concerned with that for a number of reasons, okay? So one of them is that you can always fold forward, right? So here I'm, I'm keeping my posture upright. I could fold forward and go past my toes, but for now I wanna keep that posture upright. So don't worry about the toes. People have different arm lengths and different leg lengths, okay? That's actually, there's differences between people, so that comes into it too. So don't worry so much about whether you touch your toes. Just hang out here a little bit. Let's take a big breath in. And then just release that from the mouth nice and slow. Again, so I'm pushing forward from the waist here. Okay, I'm just sort of pushing my chest up. Oh, and I'm just gonna relax into that a little bit. It's actually a little bit hard to relax, isn't it? Okay, it helps if you have something under your bottom to give you a bit more height, okay, for this stretch. That does help, but I'm not gonna worry about that now, okay? The last thing I want to do for this particular option is show you guys that after you've done both legs together, you can do one leg out. Okay, so these are all variations on a very basic stretch. So one leg folded in. Can you see me there okay? Okay, if I show you on the side here, I'm going to bring one knee in, let it come down, and then I just have one leg out. So this is actually easier to balance. Okay, you'll actually feel, it's okay if your knee is up in the air, that's okay. If you have something to put under your bum, that will help you for this if you're struggling a bit with your knee up in the air, okay? That will enable you to get that knee down, okay? But anyway, if you're just trying this out, I see some beautiful trying out there, okay? I see you. I appreciate that. Take it easy and don't worry about it. All we're, just, we're just trying it out. We're just having a little fun trying it out. Okay, so down. And now you really get to focus on one leg, right? So when you have the other knee bent, you really can focus in on that leg. Okay, so let's switch to the other leg. Real easy, just a taste. Okay, just a taste. We don't need to do everything. We don't need to understand everything. We don't need to master everything in one day. We couldn't anyway. 
So I just want to give you guys a little taste and I want you to understand why hamstring flexibility is important. Okay, so you just, I'm just going to hold that for another 20 seconds for those of you who are joining along. Big breath in through the nose, big breath out through the mouth. I haven't told you why yet. And uh, one more time. Good. Now, that was a series of stretches with the hamstring. Now, here's one that I have in the scoliosis relief program, which we do right from the very beginning, which is called the forward fold. So here, we're not only going to be stretching the back of our thighs, our hamstrings, or our biceps femoris, as they're called, anatomically. We're also going to be stretching our lower back, okay? So we're going to come on down here. And we're going to, not coming down at all. We're going to be standing here. I'm going to breathe in, bring up those arms. And then as I exhale, I'm going to fold down, tuck in your chin and let your back round down vertebrae by vertebrae. And friends, right about here, you will feel your middle back. So see how I'm hunched over here? This, I'm hunched over because I'm on my way down. So I'm getting into the vertebrae of the thoracic spine. And I'm giving them a little love, a little stretch. I'm now moving on past them. I'm coming down to the lumbar area. I can feel, okay, the top of my lumbar area. And we go down. You see, you'll hear people say in yoga classes, go vertebrae by vertebrae. Usually you can't actually go vertebrae by vertebrae. But when you think about it, it helps you to go as much as you can level by level. All right. And we're going to put our arms together here. Grab your elbows. Put your arms over your head so your ears are where your biceps are. <clears throat> and then you just hang. Now, there's a couple things you can do here. You can bend your knees to take pressure off your lower back. And if this is making your lower back sensitive, you've got to bend your knees or you've got to stop entirely. And we'll talk about it. Okay, so you never should be doing something that's hurting your, um, it, well, you shouldn't be doing this if it's hurting your lower back. Okay, so we're coming down here. Knees bent takes pressure off the lower back. Or when you're comfortable, you try to straighten those knees and you will really feel that hamstring stretch. They don't have to be completely straight though. That's something I need you to understand. Okay, they do not have to be completely straight and I want you to understand that relationship. Sensitive back, bend the knees, okay? Not sensitive lower back, you're gonna straighten the knees. And when you come up out of this stretch, you bring your knee, you bend your knees, you bring your butt down and you roll back up. Now, the forward fold is one of my favorites because not only does it work the back of the legs, it also works and stretches and releases the lower back very immediately. Okay, I told you before that there's a relation anyway between the hamstrings and the lower back, but the forward fold, you're really going to feel it. Okay, and the last, uh, okay, 1023. Yes, sir. Any questions, guys? Drop me a little question if you have any in the group. Let's, let me just go take a look here excuse me, and see that everything is good for my stream. So I hope you guys are having fun. I hope you can understand why you've got to have some flexibility if you're stiff in the way that people are typically stiff, right? Which is most of us, me included, excuse me. I used to be a lot stiffer. Um, right. Let me just go check this out. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up with two more quick things. I'm going to show you a stretch for, I'm going to show you a stretch for your inner thighs and your hip flexors. So it's a butterfly stretch that you guys have seen since forever in gym class, most likely. Okay, real easy. Okay, you know what it is. It is helpful if you have something under your bum again. Okay, so something here. When you get a bit of height, it gives you leverage, right? And we're a lot about leverage in the scoliosis relief program, setting up leverage so that the back works in a way that we want, okay? But whether you do it or not for this stretch is, is less important, but leverage is important. So here we are. Bring those feet together, sitting comfortably, okay? Okay, so this is not like cross leg. That's pretty good hip flexibility already there, though. Dante. Okay, so, so feet together. And once again, we breathe up high. Now, you don't always have to do this. It's just that it helps to, you give a little elongation through your spine. And then we're going to lean forward, reach down. OK, 
Okay, once your hands are on the floor, you can crawl your fingers a little forward. I'm sorry, I know you can't see my fingers right now. And then you can put your palms up. So put your palms up and just rest them. And then you're gonna just let your head and neck fall completely relaxedly. So, and same thing with the forward fold, you just wanna let your head fall. You do not wanna be holding it up. You don't need to do anything with it. Just let it, just let it fall and it's gonna help in the stretch. So here you're gonna feel it stretching the inner part of your legs here, all right? And so this is relevant to hip flexibility and this is relevant to being able to sit cross-legged comfortably. That's really very good. That's very good, okay? Okay, so this is relevant to sitting cross-legged both sides. This is also relevant to getting one shin flat. So notice I have, remember I have height here, okay? So I couldn't actually do this if I didn't have height. But one shin flat, and then bringing one leg up. Don't do this right now. I just want to show you this because this is a posture which is actually super helpful for setting up a beautiful elongation in the spine and helping your nervous system understand your limbs and your spine. Okay, it's called nervous system feedback or proprioception. So that's that's a position which is a goal to come into in the scoliosis relief program, but we don't usually do it in the first month because people are building up flexibility in the first month. Okay, so. Why do we breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth? Very simply, it primes your nervous system to release what's called the stretch reflex. The, the complicated name for it is the myotatic reflex. And that's a reflex that protects your muscles from getting hurt. So for example, pretend this is your, well, I'll just show you with my leg. So that reflex, if I throw my leg out, it, it, it tenses right at the moment that my leg reaches the end of my range of motion, it tenses to protect your muscle. So it's a protective reflex. But when you're stretching, you want that reflex to relax. <sighs> and as you breathe in that way, it actually primes your nervous system to relax the reflex. And so your stretch gets a little deeper. Last thing I wanna show you guys today is some foam rolling. So I'm just gonna give an example of something that we can do with this, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna roll our you know what, we'll just roll our hamstring for today. Okay, so real easy, we'll keep it all about the, we'll keep it mostly about the hamstrings. So I'm gonna come and put it at the top of my hamstring, excuse me, the bottom of my hamstring here. I'm gonna come up on it and I'm just gonna roll. Okay, so this is just a really simple example. What we do in the scoliosis relief program is we start with the back and we start rolling with the, the sides of the back, the latissimus dorsi muscles and it's very painful, okay? So here, the one thing about myofascial release you need to know is that there is a place where you will find that you're very tight and where it's really quite painful. And so what you do there, I will show you this on the side, what you do when you find the place that's really tight is you rest on it gently. Again, you, if, it's, if it's completely insupportable, if it's, if it's um, if it's overwhelmingly painful, you, your body will tense up. And so that's not what we want. So here I'm going to lie on the side. This, this big muscle here, latissimus dorsi, I'm going to lie on here. And I'm going to turn my palm up and I'm going to roll. And right away, I feel some areas that are very sensitive. And because I'm rolling on my back a bit, I'm also in some of the back musculature connected to my scapula. So... Should we do that on both sides? Yes, oh yes. Oh, almost always on both sides unless there's an indication otherwise. Good question, okay? All stretching is done on both sides, okay? Um, as I said, unless you know, we find out you've got one side which is really stiffer, then we maybe we'll do two on that side and one on the other, okay? Um, great, so we have come to, oh, is it normal that it hurts behind the knees? If you're doing the myofascial release, is that what that question is about? If so, yes. Okay, it will hurt everywhere. So not everywhere, but it will hurt in a lot of places. Okay, so you have fascia. Fascia is connective tissue, which runs throughout our body. And so we say myofascial release. We're talking about releasing some tightened fascia, but actually also we're talking about releasing muscle tension that is held in deep. So one of the reasons I like this divot on this particular kind, you can see these on Amazon, um, is that when you're rolling your back, it really enables you to go a little bit to both sides of the spine and you find the tense fascia and the tense tight muscul musculature on both sides of your vertebrae or on the side of your vertebrae where you need it, depending where your curves are. And boy, will you feel it, okay? So you feel it, you rest there, and then you start to get this 
relief after a little while. You, you feel, wow, I can stand a little better. I can move a little better. And in fact, if any of you are into doing anything athletic, um, when you open up your hips and you work on some myofascial release, you actually get more power, more speed, and more balance. So athletes obsess over hip flexibility. Okay. So it's just a kind of cool thing. That's an aside, you know, probably, you know, none of us are training for some athletic event, but it's a kind of cool thing. So not only does this help your scoliosis, it also helps everything you want to do, helps you get groceries from the car. Okay. You're a little stronger. You're a little more coordinated. Okay. So balance or rather flexibility and myofascial release for scoliosis. Okay. So that was the subject of our meeting this morning and short class, little taste. If you want more information, you know where to find me. On my website, I have um, a five session workshop, which you can get access to the videos for. You just jump on my website. Let me know if you want the link for that and then you enroll. Um, it's a little long, but each of them are an hour. So I think in the future, I will upload another series that are shorter. But anyway, it gives you a sense more of the program and you can always talk to me and you can also always just call me anytime, you know, call me, message me, and we'll, and we'll just talk. And if you want to actually try for an hour, the whole program, take a look at the uh, portal that we have. So you get an online portal where you have videos and this sort of thing, instructional materials. It's 20 bucks Canadian, just so that people don't make an appointment and then, you know, leave me hanging after. So it's all just, just a little, you just put down a little pocket, not pocket change, but small amount of money to start off a trial with, with me one-on-one. -on -one. So I know some of you, it's for your daughter, or for your son, some of you it's for yourself. And of course you don't need to, I just wanna give you those options and I'm here to answer your questions, guys. All right, thank you, nice to see you. Nice to see 